The online riding platform Zwift has never been more popular. If you're riding in Zwift and you want to win your first race, we've got some top tips for you, courtesy of pro Zwift racer Chris McGlinchey. Let's dive in. Tip number one, hydration and nutrition is key. In Zwift racing, races are generally around half an hour to one hour long, sometimes longer. So making sure you're getting into the race hydrated and well fueled is, is super important. So generally in the, in the hours leading up to a Zwift race, uh, making sure you're drinking electrolytes and water so that you're well hydrated um, means you're gonna get the best out of, out of your body and yeah, more likely to do, do well in the race. Tip number two is, is warming up and starting fast. So if anyone's done a Zwift race before, you'll know this, the start of the race is always the hardest and you'd, you'd be surprised how many people actually actually get dropped at the start of a race and their, their race is over before it's even started. So making sure you get on the turbo trainer 15, 20 minutes before the race starts, get a good warm up, make sure your muscles are well warmed up, you have everything ready and just start fast. So I, I normally wind my effort up five to 10 seconds before the actual race starts so that you're starting really fast. Um, and then it normally settles within one to two minutes, but at least when you start hard, you can get into the front of the pack and you've got the, the most chance not, not to get dropped and, and start the race well. Tip number three is learn the art of drafting. If you've ever done a Zwift race and you look at the results at the end and see that someone's finished ahead of you that has a lower watts per kilo or lower average power than you, it's, it's probably because they're, they're better at drafting than you. So in, in Zwift, drafting plays a huge part um, and it's something that can be practiced and it's something that, that people don't do very well. When you're in the bunch, you, you get the drafting effect like you would out, out in real life. So making sure you kind of practice that and kind of practice pedaling easier than, than the bunch and learning how, how to do that is, is really key because it means that when you get your crucial part in the race or when when there's a hard hill you'll you'll be more recovered than than other riders that, that maybe haven't been drafting you could even use a race as a practice run and just try and get the lowest possible average par in that race not try and win or not try and do anything else other than um, yeah, just practicing your drafting. Tip number four is is setup. Um, just making sure that your setup is is optimized for racing. Uh, and there's there's loads of different things that we can do here. So your your internet connection being probably one of the most important ones. The the perfect option is is running a wired connection, so an Ethernet cable directly to either a laptop or a computer, just so that there's there's zero interference. Making sure your internet connection's strong and there's zero chance of dropping out connection. Tip number two on, on the connections is your sensors. So if you're running Bluetooth or Ant Plus, making sure that there's no unnecessary devices that are on. So your phone being on Bluetooth, for example, or or other devices like a, a speaker on Bluetooth or things like that that could interfere. Just just have the things that you're using, so your your power meter or your turbo trainer and your, your cadence sensors and only use those. Tip number three, fans. So even in Northern Ireland or in the UK when it's it's freezing in the winter, you, you, you still get really, really warm. So making sure you have a fan to keep the air airflow going and keeping you cool is really important as well because you can overheat really quickly uh, start to sweat loads and then that'll lead to dehydration. Screen size is also super important. So for me, like I, I struggle when I'm doing a hard effort to look at a tablet or a phone or something really small and actually see what's going on in a race. So being able to connect it up to a bigger screen, perhaps a, a big TV or a, a PC monitor or something so that you can actually look at the, um, at the race and what's going on better. Um, you can see when riders are attacking or, or you can see um, things like that. It, it just really, really helps there. Another tip there on, on your setup would be um, just, just having nutrition easily accessible. So potentially having a, a table beside you or, or even a dedicated a trainer table. Um, like Zawahu and Lifeline do, do trainer tables. That means you can keep your, your phone, your nutrition, an extra ball super handy so that everything's within reach. You don't want to be racing and reaching for a water bottle that's just too far out of the way and have to get off your bike or fall off the turbo train or trying to get it or something. Tip number five would be knowing the course um, and the, the best power ups for the finish. So if you want to win or you want to do well in a race, it, 
it's advised to know where the finish is the last couple of kilometers so you know where you can be positioned and also what power up is ideal for that course um so if it's a if it's a hilltop finish generally you'll want the feather power up which reduces your rider weight you can kind of push more watts per kilo um, and that'll really help on a on a hilltop finish and then if it's a flatter finish then then the preferred option would be the aero helmet as well which basically reduces your drag and allows you to go faster in a sprint so they're generally the two best options for a, a finish but if you know what power up you want for the the finish and what the best power up is for the finish if you get that 10 kilometers into a 40 kilometer race then I would keep the power up that you want for the finish if you get it early on in the race rather than using it up and then maybe not getting that same power up again and you, you generally get power ups through KOM banners or sprint banners and finish line banners and things like that so that's there are the opportunities in the race when you can get one. So tip number six is just playing to your strengths. There's two main types of riders. So you'll, you'll have climbers and you'll have sprinters. So if, if you want to win a race as a sprinter, you're, you're better off going for a flat course. And if you want to win a race and you're generally a lighter rider that, that maybe doesn't have raw power, but has a good watts per kilo, then, then trying to find a course that finishes on a hill climb or relatively close to a, a, a big climb in the race, then, then that'll be your biggest chance of winning. Work on your weaknesses, I suppose, as well. So if you know you're a climber, the, the thing that you probably need to work on is your sprint and, and vice versa for a sprinter. It's, it's working on either reducing your weight slightly or, or trying to just get better at longer sustained efforts. So if you want to try and win your first swift race, try and, try and pick a race that's best suited to, to your strengths. If you want to take it to the next level and you're you're trying to get the real marginal gains, there there's lots of little things that you can do. So I suppose if you're using a turbo trainer as your main power point, then drivetrain efficiency comes in to the, the equation. You lose quite a bit of power between where you, you output it from your pedals to, to the power source. So making sure either your, your chain's clean and your cassette's clean and your drivetrain's clean or, or going for, for some high performance components like the, the ceramic speed equipment. So they have some really, really cool uh, equipment that helps uh, improve drivetrain efficiency like their their oversized pulley wheels their ufo chain which which has a special coating on it and the the ceramic speed bottom bracket as well so all those components have ceramic bearings and they help reduce the the loss of uh, power in your your drivetrain setup so if you want to just get every additional watt and make sure that you're you're getting the best performance then then that's a that's a really that could be a good upgrade and that'll, that'll help you on on the road and off it on the, the turbo trainer as well. So it's it's probably a worthwhile investment if, if performance is, is important to you. There you go. There's Chris's top tips to win your first Swift race. Have you got any more to add? Let us know down in the comment section below. Right on.